appoints local government education secretaries. Xenophobia. Nigeria recalls High Commissioner to South Africa. Decision of Southeast Wellness. Today's edition of MC All News at 7. I am Emeka Chibu. Abia State Governor Kizi Bazun has approved the appointment of education secretaries for the 17 local government education authorities in the state. This is contained in a statement issued by the Chief Press Secretary to the Governor, Nibuchi Imamaka. The Governor named the following persons to take charge of the local government education secretaries. For our bandmates, Honorable Gladys, one more. Abasa, Mrs. Olema Ibazo. Arochuku, Mrs. Patricia Nwanko Obasi. Bende, Baraba Okori Obonaya. Ikuana, Honorable Mrs. Chinwe Hilebu. Isia Langwa North, Mr. Felix N. Opara. Isia Langwa South, Lady Oduchi A. Odo. Isukoto, Mr. Nama Ugeni. Obingwa, Mrs. Petra Ngozi Wukata, uh, Hofia, Mrs. Martin Ubu, Usisiya Mongwa, Dr. Mrs. Ngozi C. Njoko, Ugunabo, Mr. Austin Ojo, Okwa East, Chief Monday Anoko, Okwa West, Mrs. Olive Wamaka Oko, Umu Nunch, Mrs. Chiwe Elem, Umaha North, Honorable Clement Unyoziri, Umaha South, Mrs. Nice Ihechi Nusu. Governor Bazo directed that the newly appointed education secretaries be sworn in by their respective local government transition committee chairman. Nigeria has recalled its ambassador to South Africa, Ambassador Kadiru Bala. The nation has also pulled out of the World Economic Summit. Nigeria has also demanded full compensation for damages by South Africans. The move aims to register serious displeasure with the South African authorities over the ongoing xenophobic attacks on Nigerians residents in South Africa. The decision was taken at a morning meeting between President Muhammad Buhari, Vice President Yemi Ushibajo on Wednesday in Abuja. Minister of Foreign Affairs Godfrey Onyama also attended the meeting at the presidential villa. The source further stated that Nigeria would pull out of the World Economic Forum on Africa, scheduled to be held in Cape Town, South Africa, from September 4 to 6. Nigeria follows the example of Congo, Rwanda, and Malawi, who have since pulled out of the summit over xenophobic attacks against their citizens. And still other xenophobic attacks in South Africa. Nigeria has boycotted the World Economic Forum on Africa 2019 holding in Cape Town, South Africa. This is coming after a meeting between President Buhari, the Vice President, and Minister for Foreign Affairs. The forum, which kicked off Wednesday, had no Nigerian delegation in attendance as other African countries joined Nigeria in boycotting the event. The Nigerian government is also exploring possible options, including sanctions against the South African government. The government is also deliberating on possible actions from within after some Nigerians carried out reprisal attacks against South African businesses in Nigeria. It will be recalled that the Foreign Affairs Minister, Unyama Gofu, met with the South African High Commissioner to Nigeria, Bobby Monroe, on Tuesday to express his displeasure at the xenophobic attacks and to also condemn the attacks. And meanwhile, MTN Nigeria has directed its workers to stay at home in view of the ongoing attacks against South African companies operating in Nigeria. 
The telecom company also directed all its stores and service centers to be closed as a precaution until further notice. The company said it will continue to provide uninterrupted services as it was concerned about the safety and security of its customers, members of staff and partners. It was gathered that security operatives stood guard at the head office of the company on Wednesday to avert the destruction of the company's property. In a statement issued on Tuesday, the CEO of MTN Nigeria, Freddy Moorman, said the company was against all forms of violence and xenophobia against people. Heavy rains continue to raise concern for motorists as potholes along Folks Road slows the pace of traffic. The road remains a vital lane to the popular area market. MCL News highlights this development and Esther Dukwe reports. A visit to the area reveals pockets of potholes developing into gullets along the road, making it difficult for motorists to gain freely assets. Respondents express dismay at the potholes which affect motorists and pedestrians. People who live in the first world and people who trade in area markets, very, very big concern. My people are suffering. The other can stay, you can, can stay in the other for over four hours, five hours, because of this little spot. And in fact, it is not, it's not, it's not visible. We have been suffering in this road since this year. From Bryce Junction to Ariara Junction, the road have been spoiled. Many people have been complaining, their cars, transport are complaining, everybody. They are calling government to help us. It is affecting us seriously, both the business, everything, because of the bad road. My feelings about this very particular Fox Road is too bad because it's not motorable and it's not encouraging based on we that normally applies on it. People that want to go for a business from here will have a delay. If you have an appointment by within one hour time, you will leave your house in the next two hours for you to meet up. Do you understand? If you are going, even not only in Ososo, as you are going from uh, area, area down to us and named, is another different whole story. Lending his voice on the poor state of the road, the Commissioner for Information, John Oki Carlo, stated that Fox Road is an ongoing project that has not been completed. Fox Road is an ongoing road project. We were compelled to open Fox Road to traffic because we were coming that case. See, Fox Road leads to the most important market to us in Abia State. That's the area market. More than a million families depend on the area market for their daily bread. When we started that work, our challenge was to complete that work without ever shutting down our area. Because we know that if there is no business in Ariara for one day, a lot of money will be lost by our people. So what we did was to prepare Fox Road, make it more travel, so that people can drive from end to end, and do that without disrupting trading activities. We have not completed Fox Road. We have seen the spotting. And that is because the second and last layer have not been laid. Respondents called for urgent work to prevent further damage to the road. Let the government look into this brass road to the to Aria Aria Junction to walk the road. Both the gota, the gota has blocked. The, uh, if what if, if there is a rain, everybody will be suffering. There is no anywhere to put leg. Please, uh, we are pleading for government to take care of this road. This road is too bad for for the motorists. Honestly, we the individuals cannot walk it. Is their responsibility so that they at least they let them come to our head and help us to amend it. Good road infrastructure remains paramount in government's quest to unlock the vast economic potentials of the city of Aba. Esther Ndupe, MCL News. Parents have been advised to exhibit equal love and care to their children, irrespective of their financial and social strata. This, they say, will help to curtail unhealthy rivalry witnessed amongst siblings in various families. The advice was given by guests on MCL Igbo program on Salachi Umoabia while speaking on the dangers associated with unhealthy competition amongst siblings. Ihuma George completes the report. Sibling rivalry is a type of unhealthy competition or animosity among siblings. Contributing to the topic, the guest stressed that sibling violence is the most common form of family violence occurring frequently than parental abuse. 
They noted that sibling rivalry is often fueled with psychological and physical aggression, which most times results to depression, anxiety, and anger, if not checked on time. On the causes of sibling rivalry, the guest bring the poor parenting, quest for materialism, greed, and even handiwork of some kingsmen whose trade in stock is to sow seed of disunity among siblings just for their selfish interest. and family members not to wait for a problem to get worse before intervening by developing a healthy, united and loving family environment. They were also encouraged to avoid any divisive acts amongst their children. <laughs> Other respondents say that family remains the first agent of socialization and creative institution. Hence, it behoves on the family in building a conflict free society. In Roman Judge, MCNs. And still to come on MCO News. Communique reactions through the decision of Southeast governors. INEC to deploy 24,000 ad hoc staff for Kogi Bayelsa election. Gunmen disrupts PDP governorship primary in Kogi. Aruna Kadri rises to 19 in latest ITTF ranking. Details of these stories will come your way after this time out from our Omaha Production Center. Please. Stay tuned. Have you been finding it difficult to cook for your family? Is cooking top giving you sleepless nights? Don't worry. Bobby Cooking Gas Plant to the rescue. Bobby Cooking Gas Plant, 74 Abowood Road, opposite FIRS Office Aba, is now open for business. Yes, compared to other sources. Cooking gas is easier, handy, convenient, and more affordable when you buy from us. Bobby Investment is a name and source you can trust and depend on when it comes to petroleum products. At Bobby Cooking Gas Plant, your satisfaction and peace of mind is our major concern. So enjoy doing business with us. We use new digital scale, digital dispenser, and we refill your gas cylinder at moderate price. Remember, at Bobby Cooking Gas Plant, what you pay is what you get. Inquiries call 0803-751-5558 or 0806-408-3835. Bobby Cooking Gas Plant, 74 Abowell Road, now open for business. Bobby Cooking Gas is the best! Do not deface Abia State with posters. Do not defecate on our 
have streets. Do not litter Abia State. urinate in public places. You know chop they go talk. What do you make me do for this one? I say make me do the things where we carry my hands. My soul won't want that. I be not been so keep Abia State clean. This message is brought to you by MCL TV. Thanks for staying with us. If you have just joined us, you are watching MC Earl News. At this point, we shall go over to our Omaha Production Center where Noro Kafu is standing by with more stories. Noro, good evening. Good evening, America Chibu, and welcome to Omaha. My name is Nora Okafor. A communique released by the Southeast Governors after a meeting held at the Lion House in Ugras continues to elicit reactions from people in Abia and around the region. This time is coming from residents who believe that the decision was taken in good faith, but expressed worry at its timely implementation. The report. The meeting of the Southeast Governors Forum, which was held in Enugu on the 31st of August at the State Government House, ended with a 14 points resolution. The forum, among other things, approved a joint air operation in the region to flush out bandits in all forests in the Southeast. They also gave a marching order to the security agencies to arrest any cattle headers seen with AK 47 rifle or cutlacks. The forum also set up security committee, which is headed by Major General Ebel Obi-Umai, retired. The meeting was held with the Minister of Aviation, Senator Hadis Ariki, representative of the Minister of Works, heads of security agencies at the national, zonal and state levels, managing director of the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, the President General of Hanese Ndibu Chifunle Award, Professor Math Naji, among others in attendance. It's aimed at ensuring the security of the entire Southeast. Abia residents who spoke to MCL News commended the governors for what they described as a right step to handling insecurity in the Southeast. Uh, I, I do sincerely commend the state governors from the Southeast. Uh, in Igbo language, we always say that in Boeki Tatora Wototia. Let us believe that they woke up and they, they decided to uh, carry their burden upon their shoulders and not wait for other people to. I uh, do the needful about the security uh, situation in the South, especially as uh, it involves uh, headers uh, from us, glad that been part of, the, uh, of our story for quite a long time. I appreciate their uh, at least coming out to speak to, uh, speak on behalf of the Igbos for now, because this is, uh, is, it is, this is a call we've always made, insisting that our leaders have to come out and speak. Now that they have spoken, it's their responsibility and ours also to ensure that it doesn't just stop at the speaking, that it goes beyond the speaking, we put it into practice. At the implementation of the contents of the communique, 
This is what they have to say. Yeah, the most important thing is taking a step. Uh, whether the step takes us to uh, one mile or two miles or three miles, that becomes a different thing. Uh, the most important thing, like I said, is that taking the step to actually decisively, uh, headlong, go after these, uh, these uh, problems. And uh, if they follow it religiously, not just from the, from the mere talking of it, if they push it and push it the way they should, I'm sure before long, something positive will be coming our way. You know, thinking is one thing, and I know, one thing I know is that if what they have said is practicable, if it's put in place, it will solve it. The other state government also states its position on the communique. The government fully aligns ourselves with the resolutions from that meeting. We think that uh, if those measures are uh, taken within the southeast region that we'll be able to limit the number of clashes uh, between farmers and herdsmen. Of course, most of these uh, clashes happen because of the movement from one location to another, one community to another. We will take these measures in partnership with the federal government, believing that we are all on the same page in terms of securing the nation. The meeting was attended by Governor Zifanyo Gwai of Enogo State, David Umayo of Ebony State and Chairman of the Farm, Willie Obiano and Ambra State, Emeka Ehedio of Imo State and Deputy Governor of Abia State, Vice Honorable Udo Kochuku. The forum also commended Governor Uguay for being the first to commence operation of forest gas in the southeast and encouraged the many states to launch theirs. Joy Dewey, a senator representing Bielsa Central, has won the People's Democratic Party governorship primary in Bielsa State. The primary conducted in Yenigua and Houston and spewed over to ranks the morning. The senator scored 561 votes, while his major rival in the primary, Timmy Alibi, scored 365 votes. The deputy governor of Bielsa State, Jonah, who was among the 21 governorship aspirants, scored 62 votes. Gary 60 enjoyed the support of the Bielsa governor, Sarah K. Dixon, and his next direction to him, an influential block within the People's Democratic Party in the state. Before his election in 2019 as, as a senator, he served as a member of the House of Representatives. He had been a commissioner for youth and sports in the state when the former president, Goodluck Jonathan, was governor of Bielsa State. Along with a former managing director of the Niger Delta Development Commission, had the support of the former president, Goodluck Jonathan. And in Kogi, government disrupted the People's Democratic Party governorship primary in the state. The election ended abruptly in the early hours of Rank State when government invaded Kong Rank Stadium in Lokoja, failing of the election. Voting had ended and the sorting of votes was ongoing when the government stormed the venue and started shooting from different directions. Security officers, aspirants, delegates and others scampered for safety as parodic gunshots rang in the air. Many people at the venue of the election, including journalists, were injured. Some lost their phones and other belongings as a result of the incident. The number of casualties has yet, has yet to be ascertained as at the time of filing this report. The party's primary is to decide its candidate for the 16th November governorship election in Holy State. The Independent National Electric Commission has said it will deploy 24,000 ad hoc staff for the Kogi and Bayelsa State governorship elections on 16th November. The elect chairman, Mahmoud Yakubu, said there's in an interview at the commission's headquarters in Abuja. Yakubu said in Bayelsa State, the commission will deploy 9,000 ad hoc staff, while for Kogi, about 15,000 ad hoc staff will be deployed. He also said the staff will go through training ahead of the off second election. The INEC boss added that for security training, the commission has given the spectre. General of Police, Mohammed Adamu. Yakubu also said there are over 170,000 uncollected permanent voters card in Kogi State, alone with about 50,000 in Bayelsa. He said the commission would ensure it reaches a large number of people who are yet to collect their voter cards by sending book SMS and making phone calls through their known phone numbers. 
and the following saying British Prime Minister Boris Johnson is in the midst of a major parliamentary showdown over his bids to take the United Kingdom out of the European Union by an October 31st deadline with or without a divorce deal. On their first day back after summer holidays, Rebel and opposition MPs on Tuesday voted in favor of seizing control of the parliamentary agenda for the following day in order to introduce a bill forcing the Prime Minister to request a present delay until 31st January. October 19th. Johnson has threatened to push for a snap general election on October 15th if the bill is passed. While his administration has moved to expel rebel MPs from his own ruling conservative party for defying the government in Tuesday's vote. The rapidly unfolding Brexit drama comes in the run up to a controversial week's long suspension of parliament from mid September until mid October. That's it from Omar here. It's back to you, Emeka Chibu, for the rest of the news. Thank you so much, Nora, for those reports. And in sports, following his triumph at the 2019 Nigeria Open, alongside his semi final finish at the 2019 Bulgaria Open, Nigeria's Aruna Kadru has risen to 19th place in the September International Table Tennis Federation ranking. Jonah Oche completes the report. Aruna Kodri was rewarded with ranking points that moved him up to 19 from 22, where he was in August 2019. For finishing second at the African Games, Kodri's points are yet to be considered as the ranking has been concluded before the final march of the African Games in Rabat. Ajis Omar Ansaru returned to the top 50 as the African Cup champion is now ranked 44th in the rating. The Egyptian, who finished third at the African Games, moved from 51 to 44. He is expected to represent Africa at the 2019 ITTF Men's World Cup in China later in the year. Nigeria's Fatima Bello is one of the biggest movers in the ranking as the national female champion rose to 270 from 873 in the ranking. With this, Bello is the fifth best rated Nigeria female player in the board and 17th best in Africa. China's Taipei's Lin Junhu and China's Chen Jinjong made notable progress on the September 2019 board rankings. Nigeria Super Falcons defeated the visiting Algeria 1-0 at the Agege Stadium to qualify 3-0 aggregate for the next stage of the 2020 Tokyo Olympics women's football. Ashishat Oshuala grabbed the winner for the Falcons in the 57th minute after the visitors did everything to keep a clean slate in the first half. The African champions are to play Côte d'Ivoire in the next round of the qualifying tournament later this month. Nigeria's under-23 national team has touched down in Khartoum ahead of the Africa under-23 Cup of Nations qualifier against Sudan. Coach Imama Mapakabo had listed 18 players for the first leg, which is built for September 5 at the Oldman Stadium. They had their first training session at 4 p.m. today under the watchful eyes of the coach. To reach the third round, Nigeria defeated Libya 4-2 over two legs after losing the first leg 2-0 away from home. A spirited fight from Nigeria inspired them to their first win at the FIBA Basketball World Cup 2019 after seeing North Korea 1866 in one-sided Group B tie early today at the Wuhan Sports Center. Four players recorded a double digit as the Tigers showed their true spot and returned to a winning ways in a convincing performance that saw them get clear to a possible qualification for the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. In tennis, Grigor Dimitrov rallied for a shocking upset of 20-time Grand Slam champion Roger Federer at the US Open. The 78th ranked Bulgarian, who had dropped all seven prior meetings with Federer, made a dramatic fight back to defeat the sweet third seed 3 6 6 4 3 6 6 4 6 2. Juna Oje, Ems All News. And that's the size of our news package for tonight. But before we go, a recap of our major stories. 
Ada State Governor Kizi Ikbazu has approved the appointment of education secretaries for the 17 local government education authorities in the states. Nigeria has recalled its ambassador to South Africa, Ambassador Kabiru Bala, following xenophobic attacks against her citizens in South Africa. Following his triumph at the 2019 Nigeria Open, alongside his semi final finish at the 2019 Bulgaria Open, Nigeria's Aruna Kadri has risen to 19th place in the September International Table Tennis Federation ranking. Thanks for sharing your time with us this evening. My name is Emeka Chibu. Stay tuned for Akokoa. <laughs> Yakotano can you wait a runo? Akokoa. 